So I'm super excited about this podcast because if you have anything to do with cryptocurrency regulation or taxation in India, this is a man who has faced it, continues to face it, and his new company, Tax Notes, helps to solve this for you. So hi, Vinash, and thanks for coming on 21 Tars. Thank, thanks, Sandeep. Thanks for inviting me here. Really excited. Me? So it's been quite some time. I used to do these video calls all the time in Zephe. It yes. kind of brings back, uh, <laughs> brings back um, old memories. So, uh, yeah. um, anyways, you you started tax notes. Mahina started Liminal, and I'm working on a interesting crypto project as well. Hopefully, uh, do you think we'll be the ZP mafia, like the PayPal mafia? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> no, already actually, uh, Ajit is also doing a good job actually, reflexing. So, uh, lots of ex ZP people doing great stuff. I think. Uh, yeah. No, absolutely. So, so tell us about your background. How did you get involved in cryptocurrency and taxation? One super interesting things and one super boring things. Um, how did you get involved in both? Yeah, yeah. No, so uh, I I am a chartered accountant, like qualified almost now twenty five years back. Ninety eight was when I was got qualified. Crypto I started in two thousand seventeen when I joined Zepay as a CFO. And uh, and obviously you remember initially I was not very convinced. That. I mean, literally, I thought that what it—I don't know what is Bitcoin—and uh, yeah, then uh, then we started, and I think it was one I of the best. Pause. I want to I want to tell the audience how we got you right. So you, I think you're being you're being polite by saying that you were not convinced. So what happened was, I'm one of the three founders of Zepay for the audience, and uh, we were looking to get a CFO on board. Um, and so we found Avinash, and we flew him to our office and we interviewed him and we shortlisted him and then we had to chase him how, how long did we I actually thought that you're not gonna come and then Saurav was like I mean yeah he said no you said you refused to join Zepp actually <laughs> yeah yes, yes. And then how long how long did we chase you no well, actually I refused to join then uh then uh Saurav called me also called me. Uh, then I said, okay, let me come again to Ahmedabad. I, I came again to Ahmedabad. I met Mahin. I spent like few hours with him, basically. And, so Mahin is uh, funny, then you joined. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I actually, initially when I came, I only met you and uh, yeah. I didn't meet Mahin. Then you said no. Yeah, then I said no. Then, uh, then I came, I spent time with Mahin. And yeah, I mean, even then I was like, I said, I thought that it is risky, but it's something which we can look at type. Uh, I can like take that risk kind of. And I said that I think one of the best decisions in my life. I frankly didn't know about Bitcoin. I'd like heard about the dumb Bitcoin. It's like it's something, but I don't know what it is basically. But then, yeah, I mean, last six years, almost really, really roller coaster, but very exciting. Uh, I think the entire perspective has changed how the money works, why Bitcoin. So I mean, finance, even then it was like a, like a total eye opener kind of. These kind of things are not taught in your college, in your in economics, nowhere is taught. Such an interesting perspective. I just realized that you have a finance background. Of course, you're the CFO. But somebody in the finance background had no idea about Bitcoin. And this was 2017, right? Yes. Even now, 2017. Even now, Sandeep, the thing is that not many people... Not many finance people are there in crypto. Maybe they are conservative. The finance they... people are hardest nuts to crack because they have a finance background. I think it's yeah. more difficult to unteach them what they've learned in economics and you know university economics and finance. Are you? Yes, yes, that's right, that's right. Plus, obviously, it's like that is one part. Second part is that it is like because there are no regulations and all that, it is considered slightly risky. And uh, finance people are more conservative, so to say. Yeah. So even as the even in the words slightly risky. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Even today, like in India, I mean, you if you look at the ecosystem in India right now, I don't think there are there is any senior finance person in crypto doing finance. I mean, there are people who are finance background but doing hardcore crypto like a business side, but they're not. There are hardly anyone who's in from finance doing finance in crypto. And that is so sad, right? I mean, there are other places like US and stuff where hardcore mm-hmm. finance people like Paul Tudor Jones are. There are people who've gone into crypto. From a traditional finance background, there are some yeah. early key marquee names, but nobody right now. Mm-hmm. How did your how did your family feel when you joined Zepay twenty seventeen? So actually, family didn't feel anything. I mean, they don't didn't know anything about about finance or crypto or anything. So yeah. for them, it was like as usual, business as usual, kind of nothing. And why do you say why do you say it has been one of the best decisions, best journeys of your life? So actually, a I think the learning experience uh, was very good. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, 
the journey from CFO to CEO, and obviously there were circumstances, obviously, which helped me all. But at the same time, I think I learned a lot, and uh, uh, I ri- like to believe that I was ready for that. So that progression, I think, would not have happened. And uh, CFO to CEO journey, and then after that, CEO to uh, my own venture. I think into I would have been in any industry, probably would not have happened. Uh, so significant amount of learning experience and i think obviously say financially also i mean bitcoin price was three thousand dollars at that point of time when i joined crypto so so that also obviously helped yeah, yeah, the biggest money thinking about that so <laughs> just again for the audience from a c you became the cfo zeppe then you became the ceo and now you have your own new crypto startup called tax notes so tell us about yes. tax notes uh, what it does what services does it offer yeah so before that i just a quick uh this thing i received a message from but some message from a very old colleague i used to work with him like 20 years back in airtel and uh he wrote a very, very like, I didn't believe at that point of time. So he wrote uh, that uh, Avinash is a finance guy to watch for. He will become CFO and then CEO. And then someday he will start his own business and he will be very good at it. And he basically sent that link to me saying that. He... <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I was, I didn't believe at that point of time. When he wrote that review, basically. So coming back to tax note. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations. You know, on your new startup, and uh, I know there's a big news as well uh, um, in yeah. the media. We'll come to that as well. So go ahead, tell us what TaxNote. Yeah. Tax yeah, so basically, uh, basically, uh, how the idea of TaxNote came. I mean, I was linked, thinking for a very long time that uh, the crypto ecosystem, if it has to mature, it has to ultimately become financial institutions. Okay. Then the compliance, regulation, taxation, those stuff. Which is today, I think, a one out of or one and a half out of uh, needs to move from two, seven, eight, nine out of ten. I mean, at some point of time, crypto companies will be regulated like financial institutions. Okay, and we have to move into that direction. And they, as I said that there are not many people who are looking into this aspect of crypto. And then obviously, government came with specific crypto law uh, taxation laws. And uh, I think that this is a perfect break for me in terms of perfect opportunity because I understand crypto, I understand finance. And that will be, I think, the starting point for entering into this space of crypto compliance. Okay. Uh, so for me, uh, like helping individuals to file their taxes or compute their crypto tax is step number one. That itself is, a, I think, is a global problem because uh, it has its unique own uniqueness in the sense that crypto traders actually trade at 10 or even 50 places, different places, and bringing everything at one place and making sense of all that data is fairly complicated and there is no parallel in terms of any other industry for example even mutual fund share trading so they are not so complicated uh, basically so that was i think the thought process of starting tax notes so just before we go a little bit more deeply in tax notes uh, tell us about this news this has been yeah. in the media on 14th june we are recording today on the 19th of june so congratulations yeah. thanks thank you thanks thanks Andeep. looking I didn't know the team is so big already. That's amazing. No, so team is not so big actually. Uh, I mean, this is temporarily it is very big because uh, this is a tax season, June, July, uh, basically. And uh, and what we are also helping is not only we are helping in terms of computing your crypto tax, we are also helping you to file your income tax returns. Okay, and uh, so that's it's a temporary surge in uh, people actually. You can say. <laughs> <laughs> Along with the, yeah, that, yeah. hopefully. So tell us yeah, about yeah, the funding. Who are the investors? So actually, I think the biggest investor is Rahul Pagripati. He's the current owner of Zappe, uh, basically. So last year when I this idea idea came to me, I said that I I told him that I was discussing with him that this is what I want to do, and uh, he was very very like uh, helpful. He said that okay, that's very good idea. We'll also fund it. Fund uh, so he he basically funded it, and then obviously we have lot many people from crypto. I mean, I've been I think blessed. Uh, Nischel invested. Uh, in fact, Nischel, I think the first check came from Nischel. Uh, although the pro- first promise came from Rahul, the first check came from Nischel. Then uh, we have Mahin, uh, who is invested. Ashish uh, from CoinSwitch uh, has invested. So, uh, so really, really, Ajit has invested a, a small check. So, I think it gives me lots of encouragement in terms of people who have really, really contributed in building crypto ecosystem in India. So, they are helping me in this. So, really blessed that. And uh, then you have a lot of partnerships as well, right? Like, I mean, on your website, you are integrated with a lot of exchanges. So tell us a little bit about this and how does this work? Yeah. So basically, as I said, that if you are a crypto trader, you are you will have at least, I mean, as per one study, you 
on an average crypto traders has three and a half accounts three and a half that means three to four exchanges so they will have account with wazirx zpay coin dcx binance okay and uh, so what the first task is that you bring all the transactions to that at one place okay all the trades all crypto transfers and everything so that's what we do into we integrate with these players either you have an option of take getting your data through apis okay for example binance zpay in some cases the exchanges don't have open apis so to say so in that case you basically download your data your trade statement and load it in our system and our system is designed to ingest that format basically whatever format those exchanges have okay so that is one part of relationship which actually you don't need a, in a sense an agreement or anything with the exchange it's like a user data is coming so all these exchanges are integrated uh, the second kind of partnership which we have is uh, more like a b2b part like a marketing partnership okay because uh, all these customers who are there with the exchange they are our potential customers okay so instead of directly approaching those customers spending money on marketing if we have a tie up with exchanges that becomes much more easier to approach the customer so we have for example exclusive partnership with zpay with wazirx and with geotas basically where we are getting access to their customer they are promoting us to their customer so to say so again it helps a lot it gives significant amount of confidence to the end customers if these exchanges are vouching for us and so how's the response been so far how many users do you have uh, how's it looking like i mean it's crypto winter going on so you know how's the response been so response has been actually very very good and uh, in fact it has something to do with crypto winters but what happens is that last year which is the government of india introduced tds okay and there are around like 7 8 lakh to a million people whose tds has been deducted okay so all those people in a way have no option to to file their income tax return because information is already with, there with the government if they don't disclose their crypto income properly they'll receive notice okay so all those are potential customers for us okay and because we are going through exchanges and they are already have relationship with these exchanges so ex- the response has been has been very good what we are looking see is that now it will like tax either in or 80% of the returns are filed in july okay so we are now started seeing the hockey stick kind of growth from this week onwards we are expecting that it will like maybe double every few days kind of in terms of customers totally and, and what do you what do you think about the regulatory landscape i know you experience the regulatory regulatory landscape while being in zpay and you can kind of continue within tax notes you you pawn the brunt of it and you know you've seen the good times as well so what do you think what's the what's the scene on the ground yeah so my belief is that frankly that toughest time is ahead of us in terms of regulations i mean obviously we have seen that in terms of tax laws which has come in into in which is like very very steep 30% tax no set off 1% tds this has resulted in like almost 80% 90% volumes actually we not like going down it's been shifted from india okay so crypto winter has contributed but overall crypto winter even after that like 70 80% volumes have moved from indian exchanges to international exchanges PMLA has come which is very very tough exchanges will take time to implement that but even internationally if you look at what is happening in US okay i think next one or two years will be very very tough for crypto and then after that i mean you have bitcoin has to go through this fire so to say and then emerge stronger after one and a half two years then i think the real adoption or real growth will come that's my view that we'll have regulations but very tough regulations so what are the volumes in indian exchanges there what's the drop like for the audience i say it's like 80% 80 90% drop i mean if less than this 1% tds would have not have been there volumes in indian exchanges would have been 10 times what it is today basically uh, yeah. uh, so there there could be a there would have i think the ideal thing for the government would have be to put taxation in terms of income tax or but to kind of not have tds because tds completely makes trading uh, unprofitable and uh, irrelevant and skills the industry kills liquidity as well right do you have any recommendations yeah. for taxation for the indian government so basically i mean the tds should have been 0.01% because worry of the government is that you want to track transactions okay but you can track and track transactions at 0.01% also and in fact what has happened is the tracking transaction has become more difficult because if someone who was trading on wazirx or zpay is now trading on binance okay Binance is not giving information to Indian uh, to Indian government. So, in fact, uh, I mean, it has it has an impact. So, I mean, reverse impact or like uh, what they were thinking, what we are trying to solve, they have created the same problem actually. Uh, so, and was because now the data is not available, everything yeah. has gone out of 
India, all the day, all the transactions are happening for people who want to do it. They are doing it outside India. A little bit like the US, right? I mean, the US exchanges are complaining that either you make regulations so that US exchanges can thrive. So the users and the data remains with the, within the US. But all of these exchanges are now planning to kind of register themselves outside the US or they're going to other exchanges. And I think that's the similar unintended massive consequence of this kind of prohibitory regulation and taxation in there are two actually other problems also. From an economic point of view, I think the one of the problem is that uh, because of this, not only traders are shifting out of India or their trades are shifting out of India, the innovation is shifting out of India. Because ultimately, trading is only, I think, the end product. If someone is not innovating something or not creating a product, there is no trading. Okay. So those people who are creating or innovating, those people are shifting out of India. That from an economic point of view, I think from a long-term point of view, it will not be good for India. The second is that second objective or one of the objective of the government was customer protection. Okay. Now, these people who are supposed to trade on Indian exchanges are going to, let's say, FTX and losing money there. Again, it's a wrong answer for the customer, for the government. Because if you are in India, if you are in trading on Indian exchanges, the government has much more control, much more visibility Okay, to protect the customer. But the moment you go out of India, it, they are like, the customer's money is also at risk. So, so give us a, yeah, no, absolutely. Give us a brief snapshot of the taxation that's there in India. It's there on your website. I think okay. this is, you know, just for the audience who doesn't know or for audience who's kind of listening to this outside yeah. India. What is the current taxation policy of the Indian government towards cryptocurrency? So there's three main things actually, as you say. A, 30% flat tax. Okay. Uh, so you don't need, you even if you are normally a 10% slab or 20% slab, if you are making any money in crypto, you have to pay flat 30%. The second is 1% TDS on all the sales. If you're doing any sales to a resident, any you are buying from any resident, you have to deduct 1% TDS and deposit it with the government. I think, and, and I think this is the biggest issue. It's more bigger issue than 30% tax. If you are making money, you can, can afford to pay 30%. I mean, normally 20% you are paying 30%, which is not good, but it's affordable. It can be done. And the last, the biggest issue, I think this is also very big of is no set off is allowed. That in fact, what the government's position is, which is, which is some legal opinions, legal experts have a different opinion, but the government's opinion is that if you are trading even Bitcoin, in one transaction, you have made a profit and second transaction, you have made a loss. You have to pay tax on the profit. You can't like deduct so first transaction, you made 500 rupees of profit. Second transaction, you made a loss of 700 rupees. So your net loss is 200 rupees. But you have to pay 30% tax on 500 rupees. I thought it was no set off of different cryptocurrencies. Of So you, if you're making profits on Bitcoin, you could not set off a loss on Ethereum. You are saying it's... That is also this then, is a confusion? This is not a confusion, actually. Uh, the income tax form which has come, where which we have to... Actually, you have to report transaction wise and you have to say in that you have to say date of acquisition of asset, date of disposal of asset, what is a profit or loss in that transaction. And that utility doesn't allow you to total it up. You, you, total, you can only total the positives, not the negatives. But as I said that the legal opinion, the, the legal experts, they are of the opinion that this is not correct. Even the current law, which is the written law uh, passed the, by the parliament, allows for set off within not only within, within the same asset. Within this, no, within, even with, within like Ethereum or Bitcoin also. Okay. And they have like very, very like thought through legal opinion, which says that uh, as per the current law, it is allowed. What minister said in the parliament has no value in terms of it can't go against the letter of the law. And the letter of the law, it is allowed. But uh, is it a separate that, law published for the taxation of cryptocurrency where this clarity is not there? In fact, the, as per the experts, including me, the clarity is there that the start of is allowed. Wow. Because actually, I'll tell you, is this like slightly technical? Maybe I like go into slightly detail. So the section says that the setup is not allowed. Okay. But the definition of setup itself, you have to go to section 7071, which the setup means that setup of two different line of business or two different heads of business. So if you are, mm. and the thing is that if you are into crypto, doing crypto trading, it is same head of business. I mean, you can't, if you are, let's say you are trading uh, wheat, okay, it is not separate income. It is in one kg of wheat, you make loss, second kg of wheat, you make profit. You're not setting off the losses. As per the normal accounting practice, it's the same profit or loss. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, so, uh, so the word set off itself is wrong set. It's a, it's a, it has a particular definition under Income Tax Act. And if you are calculating your crypto gains and let's say Ether may profit, you have profit in Ether and loss in Bitcoin, you're not setting it off. The way to calculate it is, is it like you're calculating total profit. The way to calculate according to you 
at least as per the law, even the law that has come out specifically for the 30% crypto taxation is that in different lines of businesses, you cannot set off, which is yes. against what their opinion or some minister is saying or whatever. So what yes. is tax notes doing that uh, in the in the app? What is the position you're taking for your for their users? So in the app, as of now, we are not allowing set off, but uh, we are uh, we will allow we will we'll give option to the customer. But uh, wherever there are like large amount of differences, we are offline talking to the customer that okay, if you want to set off, we will give you working uh, which allows set off. Okay, so but the problem the options and the customer has to decide which version of that report to file. God, that's a nightmare. Yeah, but actually there is another problem because this income tax form doesn't allow you. Income tax yes, form. So you can't actually post it. You, so the income tax plan is designed against the kind of the intent of the law at least. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. And so so what are you so what's happening? I mean, you know, because there are there are chartered accountants who have to file this. So what do you think they are what is the opinion? Is there a consensus among CAs who are filing? Who are advising the clients? So unfortunately, as I said that what is happening is that uh, there are not many CAs who understand crypto. Okay, there are obviously CAs that understand. I mean, obviously they understand tax laws, but they don't understand. This episode is a free one-on-one, one-on-one for CAs who want to advise their clients, basically from somebody who is a CA and then who is the CFO of ZPA and now runs tax notes. This is fantastic. So go ahead. Yeah. So basically, the only only way to resolve this to obviously change a challenge this this. Uh, in the court of law, basically. If I would yeah. be a client and I would come to you and you would be my CA, what would be your advice? I have these transactions, I have some losses, I have some profits in Ethereum, yeah. some, uh, so, sorry, losses in Ethereum because it's a Bitcoin podcast and profits in Bitcoin. Would you tell me to set it off or like how? what, what should I do today? I have to file my returns. So basically, the thing is that thing is that you have only two options, practically speaking. Actually, three options. Uh, one option is that you don't set off and you, whatever is the income tax form you do. Okay. Second option is that you allow the set off, but in that case, you will be not file, not following the income tax form. Because income tax form says the date of acquisition and date of sale. And if you are merging two transactions, you show this. I mean, you can do the second option. No, no. You track, I mean, in the sense that just a risk. You are when you are merging two transactions, you are in a way you have because the date of acquisition and date of sale is a mandatory field. So one of the field you are billing wrong, wrong. You may have acquired at the one same same day, but you are selling at two different dates and you are checking one of the dates. Okay. Yeah. If you show it two different transactions, then it, the utility will not allow it. So you have to merge it. So that means to that yes. extent, you are not in a way technically breaking the law, saying that you are not giving the information which is required in the income tax form. Okay. Got it. Third option is to challenge it in the, in the court right away, basically. And the challenge will be that the income tax utility with the income tax department has uh, given is not in line with the law. So the court should instruct income tax department to revise the utility. Okay. Yes. So that is the third option. But obviously it is not, third option is also not easy in the sense that going to the court, you are exposing yourself uh, basically in the eyes of income tax department. Okay. So, yes. So that is also obviously costly and uh, from a visibility point of view, not everyone wants to have that visibility. So what would what would your recommendation be if I'm your client? It depends, do you have a recommendation like, or you don't? <laughs> no, in a sense that if you have, I mean, if you, if the amount is not large enough, basically, then you can go ahead and with the, and whatever is there, you can do it, whatever is in the utility. And then even that what you can do is that you can wait for some clarity. Someone will challenge the law and once they challenge the law and the, uh, and the court case is in the favor of the SSC, then you can go and file your revises. You can revise the return and say that, okay, this is what it is, basically. Are you a part of the industry association, which, you know, we started in Zappe, uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency uh, committee, BACC under IMAI. Are they doing something about it? Are you a part of it? So IMAI is no more there, actually. So there is a new association, which is called Bharat Web3 Association. And I'm part of it, obviously. But they are not doing anything on this end of now. Okay. All right. I understood the, the reason for those smart smiles and hesitant <laughs> smiles correct so they don't want to take yeah. it we are not bothering about it right basically the thing, okay. is that, I, I, thing is that it is i mean in a way going against the interpretation of the government you mean what what is going against the form you i mean sure yeah, yeah yeah because the thing is not yes. only the form it's the minister he has said he has said something in the parliament okay and the form is based on that what he has said individual yes. bond transactions so that means if there's a loss you have to ignore that and you have to still pay profits on every individual bitcoin transaction that's crazy yes. i thought from the news that it's between bitcoin ethereum and all that you could not offset losses but as per the it form it's even within the same asset which is just unbelievable i don't even know what the thinking behind this is people who are transacting on 
international exchanges what do you think is the law on that i mean people are doing it do you recommend it is it legal do you attract pmla or fema actually right so actually two three things one is one thing is very very clear and you have to pay tax if you're going to binance and trading there the same laws applies you have to whatever gains you have made you have to pay tax on that in india pmla is not clear okay and there is so no it's not clear it's not that it appears yes. according to you. According to you, it's not clear. It's in a way. I mean, you can say it's not clear. I mean, we don't know whether it applies or don't apply. It doesn't apply, and there is so no clarity would, from the. So you would not tell somebody not to use an international exchange, would you? From a law, regulate from a legal point of view. So actually, the, what you have to look at is that the law is not clear, and if you're doing it, you're taking a risk, a big risk, and. Uh, the point is that if you are a large trader, okay, or you're a like a company, then you are taking a like a known risk, kind of, and uh, maybe you're offsetting that risk. Maybe that you think the reward is more than the risk, okay. But if you are an average user, whether you want to take that risk or not, or whether it's even worth it or not, basically, because things are not clear. Second is that uh, from a protection point of view, user protection point of view, obviously Indian exchanges are much more like you're much more safer if you're doing here, here in India. Okay. But at the same time, what you have to understand is that for an average user, I mean, US dollar is, US, INR US dollar is 82 rupees, USDT is 92 rupees. It's too huge a difference to not to get tempted, basically. If you remember okay. our times, the, the premium used to be 2, 3, 4%, 2%, 3%. That used to be the premium. Now it's like more than. 10%. So break this up for the audience. Break this up for the audience. The value of USDT, which is a stable coin pegged to the dollar, which internationally trades at the same exchange rate as the dollar Indian rupee pair. In India, if you have USDT, you will get 10% more. You know, you uh, yeah, you will get 10% more INR. If you want to buy USDT, you have to give yeah, 10% if you, more. And most of the people are in this category. They want to buy USDT. Because yeah. obviously the premium is premium is because there is more demand of USDT uh, than supply. And this number is actually, if you look at last six months, it is keep on going up. I mean, it used to be like, earlier it used to be 3, 4, 5% premium. It went into 7, 8%. Then it went to 10%. Then some, now sometimes it's like more than 10%. So this so gap is going up. Of people moving to international exchanges and using a US dollar rather than an INR yeah. pair, INR Bitcoin, INR Ethereum pair. Yes, yes. Do you have any views that when you use USDT or a stable, a US dollar stable coin, do you attract any of these FEMA, PMLA laws? I mean, it's the same thing because when we discuss about PMLA, US for Indian government, USDT is same as BTC or Ethereum. They don't distinguish between uh, stable coin or non-stable coin. Let's put it this way. They don't? With the same amount of ways. Okay, because... I mean, it's a va- it's a still a cryptocurrency which is a which is a fixed value according to the U.S. government. You are saying no, no. For Indian, there is a it's the same. Yeah. Uh, so I'll give you one example. Uh, yes. You bought India. You bought uh, from Indian exchange USDT. Let's say ninety rupees. You pay ninety rupees. You got one USDT. Okay. And in now, exchanges uh, list stable coins. All of the yeah, stable yes, coins. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So now you have you have bought USDT for ninety rupees. Now you go to the international Binance. Next day you buy BTC with that. USDT. But at that point of time in the Indian exchange, the price of USDT was 92 rupees. Okay. Yes. Now, what you're doing internationally, you're selling USDT and buying BTC. Yes. When so you're, you're getting BTC at a higher price. So that means you have made a 2 rupees profit and you have to pay, pay tax on that 2 rupees. No, no, no. Sorry. Break this up. You actually ended up buying Bitcoin at a higher price. No, no. That is true. Okay. Basically, you bought USDT for 90 rupees. Correct. Day 1. Day 2, you go to international exchange and with that USDT, you bought BTC. Okay. Correct. But at that point of time, on the, on the Indian exchange, the BTC, uh, the USDT INR price was 22 rupees. Right. Okay. So that means you are saying that fair value of USDT which you sold was 92 rupees, but you had bought at 90 rupees. So you have got 2 rupees of profit and now you have to pay 30% tax on that 2 rupees. So you have to pay 60 pesos profit. Okay. Now, when you do the reverse transaction, because the cost of acquisition of BTC is increased by 2 rupees. So here it will have profit. There you will have, let's say, most probably loss when you sell BTC. Which you cannot. If it can't be, this you can't offset. Such a massive anomaly the Indian government has created with these taxation policies. Uh, yeah, it's just crazy. You're gonna have an interesting time with tax notes trying to solve all of these problems. First of all, no clarity, and you have to give a fixed yeah. kind of solution to your users. So that- 
so so that's going to be um, interesting but coming to the from the indian government's problems to tax road how do you ensure that your users data is kind of secured and private you know because that's another thing which if anybody is yeah. trying to ta- you know kind of log in and putting all the data i think that that's something i would be worried about so we are using 256 uh, bit encryption for to protect or to encrypt user data and plus obviously we have normal like uh, username password to fa we are also have that and how would you treat a, a request from the tax authorities to you for some user data yeah so basically thing is that uh, there are two kinds of services we are giving to the customer we are giving them service to calculate their crypto taxation in those cases the customer need not give their pan number and all that okay so if they don't want to give uh, so in that in those scenarios we don't have anything to give to the government basically i mean if i give you give them some random data they will not know okay the second thing is that uh, if you are filing income tax return through us okay so in that case in any case you are filing income tax returns based on the data you have given us. so that the data is in any case going to the government and third is that let's say you have uploaded the data on our website and tomorrow you don't want to go ahead uh, let's say don't file the return or so you can request us to delete the data okay re- remove the account so that also we we do basically So, so your data, if your data is with us, uh, you are filing income tax return. In any case, you are sharing with the court. So there is nothing extra we have. Basically. And what are what is this cal? You've got a link called calculators, and then you you've got calculators for a lot of other assets as well. Do you want to explain this? Yeah. So basically, what we are trying to do is that uh, we are not just when I mean, we are going through crypto customers. What we are providing to the customer is full flesh income tax return, filing income tax return. If you want to get income tax audit done, we have partners. If you receive notices from the income tax department, okay, because this last one I I believe is, is something which is going to happen a lot. Then you we can help you help you. because uh, if you are into crypto and you receive notices from income tax department i think we be- we believe that we understand crypto a lot and we'll be able to explain to the department rather than a uh, a normal practicing ca uh, basically so we provide end to end services to the customer and uh, so that's why we are i mean we want to enter through crypto but ultimately the idea is to provide end to end services another thing which has happened in very another very interesting thing which has happened, another very interesting thing which has which has happened in india is that everything is moving online okay in a transparent way so up till now there were there is only one organized player into this space 95% you mean not us no no not us in a, in a like a income tax compliance is basically normally it is done by different clear tax okay yes okay so they are the only organized player and they have only less than like 6 7% market share okay that means 95% is still with local cas with the okay individual chartered account and one of the reason is that when you get notice from income tax department you the requirement was was that you have to go to the local officer explain him and all that that means you have to be local sitting in bangalore i can't serve a surat customer now the paradigm has totally changed now 99% of the assessments income tax assessments how happens online paceless assessment on it okay so you need can be anywhere in india and reply to those notices even do a video call with the income tax officer to explain him okay so there is lots more space which is now opening up for organized player in this space understood so i was that was i was going to ask you um, who your competitors are and i can understand like some industries like some services in india this is also highly unorganized huge scope for organized players like clear tax is already there but still has a very small percentage and i think that's the opportunity you're going for as well yes yes and when you when you spoke about you know that you could kind of this reply to the income tax department if you know a client gets a, a notice is that on a one to one basis or is this part of your plan over here how does that work so that plan is not there uh, in on the on our website as of now mostly it will be on a what does that work basis. Yes. So mostly, I mean, if you are our customer, or even if you are not our customer, let's say you can at some point of time we may put some plans on website. But as of now, it's like if you come to us, we will understand your case because each case will be different. Okay, yeah. application of each case will be different. What how much time it will take? Okay, so we'll understand your case and we'll quote you that okay, this is what we'll charge you. So that is like uh, literally and- like a CA service that you would provide and you would charge, and of course those charges would be much higher. and these kind of package yes. prices because that's a one on one do you have yeah. any average pricing suppose as a client i would come to you i've got an income tax notice tax notes help me what would be the range yeah. of that charge so i i mean we have not decided on the pricing part but my guess is it will be like it will be starting in, let's say 20 25000 rupees uh, kind of number right okay but then and it depends what, your... what we will also do what we will also do is because again our plan is that is more of a democratization basically uh, we will we will train chartered accountants into 
So they obviously know text. We'll train them in terms of how crypto works, how transaction works, what they need to look at to ensure that the data is complete. Okay. And train them, partner with them so that we come, we become like a bridge between clients and the CAs basically. So if you're a CA and your your C that's that CA's client is involved in crypto and he wants to learn more, what does yeah. he do? He reaches he reaches out to you and does what what would be the next step for the, yeah, yeah, the as, as of now? As of now, it's not formalized. Obviously, it reaches out to me. There are many CAs who are reaching out to me uh, and on various channels, basically. But we'll formalize. I think after this tax season, we are like very, very busy in tax, this tax season. Once this tax season is over, we'll formalize that process. We'll have a structured program for chartered accountants to train them into crypto, in, in crypto, basically, so that they can, uh, they can serve their customers. And at the same time, we are getting some customers. We can pass on to them those customers. Basically. And so, what are the future plans? Uh, what's coming next for tax notes for you? Yeah. So ultimately, as I said, started that my goal is to work on the overall compliance regulation taxation ecosystem for crypto. Okay. Two big things which I can think of right now is, for example, international launch. Okay. So crypto is same across the world. You just need to change the tax layer. And in fact, if you're doing in India, you said that it's so complicated. Everything else looks very easy. So the idea is that, okay, we go launch international. Obviously, we have to do a larger fundraise for that. Uh, the second part is that... Uh, Internationally, uh, is there any second country which is on the top of your list? Not exactly. Not right now. But let's say South Asian Asian countries, wherever you have tax, crypto tax is applicable. US can be one, but obviously you need a bigger amount of fundraise for that. Uh, so, but US obviously is one market. So that that is one. Second, I think is, uh, and which can be like a uh, help in terms of the first part is that how can I help crypto exchanges? Because again, that is very, very important. And crypto native companies who are coming into crypto, they're like many companies who want to accept crypto as a payment. Crypto exchanges is one, like any medium sized crypto exchange has hundreds of millions of customer funds. And I said that there are not many finance people there are there to ensure that your should be balance is equal to your actual balance is equal to your book balance. You mean like I mean, proof of reserves? Proof of reserves is in a way, but proof of reserves so reserve only captures that how much money you have, customer funds actually yeah. you have, but how much you yes. should have. Uh, yeah, in terms basically. of, yes. In terms of, let's say, how much you should have, basically. And so you're uh, talking about audits for crypto businesses. Audit is one part, okay. Giving a tool to the auditors, but as a founder, for example, you are a founder of crypto exchange. You are focus is on the business side. Do you get a dashboard on it on a or a real time basis or at least even on a daily basis saying that your customer Bitcoin balance should have been one thousand and the actual balance is nine eighty? or 1020 okay and if there is a difference why there is a difference is it an only a timing difference that okay it takes half an hour for the transaction to get approved on the exchange or get finalized on the exchange or is there some other difference okay so uh, tax knows is planning a, a kind of a b2b intelligence tool dashboard tool yes. to kind of check the blockchain or integrate with your financial system and to match the same because Yes, it runs 24 7, 365. There's no cutoff, and that's the reason yeah. it's even more challenging for crypto native businesses, right? These kind of yes, yes. dashboards, and that's what yes, is on your that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's what you're thinking about. Yes, that's one product. Second is, let's say, accounting for crypto. I mean, as I, I can tell you that nine out of 10 accountants don't know, or maybe 9.9 9 .9 or 99 out of 100 accountants don't know how to do crypto accounting, and it's fairly complicated. You change yeah. one small parameter. The fee. Do you want to keep, you know, the mining fee? What do you do about that? Yeah, there, 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 there are nuances in it. Yeah. I mean, it's very, for example, I mean, if you take a loan in Bitcoin, okay, at what price you're recording in your books and the price keeps on going up, going down. So the moment you change any of these assumptions, your profit or loss will change so much that you, I mean, you can't believe basically. Your profit can become loss, loss can become profit. You have given Bitcoin as a loan now. At what price you're recording it, what price that you're recording at the balance sheet date. All that becomes very, very complicated basically. Uh, are there so, products like this on Indian exchanges to give to get loans on Bitcoin collateral or to get Bitcoin loans on rupee collateral or US stablecoin collateral? Indian exchanges are often their products. Their their products like uh, it's like a loan only. Like when you say staking, Bitcoin staking, there is nothing called Bitcoin staking or Ethereum staking. So okay. in a way, you are basically it's a, like a lending with a different name. Correct. Uh, okay. Yeah. And for accounting for this, I'm sure would be complicated. I think, yeah, it I think is. for the audience to keep things, especially in India, I would recommend first not to make any losses. Then you don't have to worry about offsetting. So never sell Bitcoin at a loss and only keep stuck, stick to one asset Bitcoin because this is a Bitcoin only podcast. And then your accounting is very simple. And then maybe you need to use only the simple features of tax nodes and none of the advanced versions of <laughs> features yeah. that you sell. 
but sorry go ahead yeah so i think that that crypto accounting is again one field where lots of progress needs to be made how accounting standards should work how the valuation should work what are i mean those standards should be in place so again lots of work needs to be done there on that side super well avinash we've spoken for almost 50 minutes this has been fantastic a one on one on crypto taxation in a complicated jurisdiction like india how can people how can cas reach reach you reach uh, tax notes so my email id is avinash.s at taxnotes.com so anyone can email me uh, and uh, we'll be really really happy to cooperate to help uh, wherever required and uh, you want to just mention the website of tax notes as well yeah yeah so it's yeah, i it's obviously it's, it's www.taxnotes.com so you can go there explore our services contact us from there uh, we'll be really happy super thanks avinash for coming from uh, cfo to ceo to tax notes and hopefully i don't know if crypto takes over the world maybe uh, some government position uh, you know advising the government on taxation laws in the future <laughs> you know i said so i want to be, i want to you can message me <laughs> yeah 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 no no i i want to be like on the side of the bitcoiners not <laughs> I mean, obviously, you you need to cooperate with the government. Without government uh, help and uh, without regulations, there will be lots of hurdles. But my primary focus will remain to help users. Super, Avinash. Thank you so much. A pleasure seeing you doing this video call after ages. Uh, thank you for coming on Twenty One Towers. Thanks, thanks, Sandeep. Thanks for inviting me.